Many people say that C++ is hard and that you can have memory leaks and stuff, but at least in game dev, people that use C++ have memory leaks problems very rarely. So if you also want to not have to ever deal with this, this 3 step video is what you need. I use these things in my C++ Minecraft clone, and it is a big project as you can see, and the number of times I had to write the new keyword in this game might surprise you. So let's go. I want to quickly mention that even if you use a language like C Sharp, there are still similar problems to memory management that you need to solve. Like if you use a graphics API, you need to allocate memory on the GPU and there's no garbage collector for that. Or you might need to handle loaded resources like 3D meshes, so step 3 will probably be useful for everyone. But now, step 1 is to not allocate when you don't need to. This sounds stupid, but stay with me. Here is an example. This is my Minecraft clone. And you can see that it is a very big project, it has world generation, entities, and it even is multiplayer. How many times do you think I have to return the keyword new in this whole project? 100 times? 50 times? No, only 5 times. And here they are. So, trust me, you don't need to write new nearly as often as you think. So, look at this code for example. If this looks ok for you, then you write new too much. Here, let me show you a trick. You ready? The rule is simple. If you don't have a reason to allocate something on the heap, you don't do it. Let's see why. The cons of allocating memory on the heap are this. It takes time to allocate, it may be slower to access, it can leak, it can fail, it can cause memory fragmentation, you need to take care of cleaning it, introducing code complexity. And the pros are none. There is no advantage of doing this. There is a lot of memory on the stack. Your player entity is like a few bytes and most of your classes are like this, so they will never fill up your stack. If you have a very big class, in that case, allocate it on the heap, but we'll talk about that later. You might be tempted to allocate memory so you can return something from a function, but you can just pass the memory to that function instead, like you can see here. You can either use a container or just pass a fixed size array with a size. Now, there's no way you will accidentally forget to free it if you don't even allocate it in the first place. Of course, there are places where you have a reason to allocate classes on the heap, but unless you have a reason, don't do it. And don't tell me that aesthetic looks outweighs the cons. Also, adding a smart pointer to it is also not an excuse. You just introduced yourself some problems and then removed one of them, instead of just doing this. Like, how is the code on the right better? Again, if you do have a reason to allocate that class on the heap, then by all means you can use a unique pointer. If you need to share it, I have a better way of doing things than using a share pointer, and I'll show that in step 3. Again, there are uses for everything, but shared pointers are just not a good solution for most of the cases that people use, and if I ever had a good reason to use shared pointers, I would totally use them. But don't just drop a shared pointer just because this is what people do. Think about your problem. You might realize that you don't even need to allocate that class in the first place, and removing complexity is always good. Also, not using polymorphism and not using exceptions will significantly help you, and I don't use them. But if you really want to use polymorphism, you can still do things like this if possible. And if you use exceptions, you basically have to use smart pointers where you use new, so an exception can skip your delete call. Now, step 2. If you really need to allocate memory, like you need an unknown sized array, and pass that around and stuff, try to use containers. Here I need to store an unknown number of players, so I can just store them in a vector or an unordered map. And you can use containers for a lot of things that need memory allocation, including for example, level loading. You can store all your entities and level data in vectors. Using these first two steps, you can get to almost never allocating memory by hand. Looking at my Minecraft clone, where I basically used new keyword only 5 times, if your project uses it way more often and does less things, you clearly can do better. So now, you might ask yourself, what about more difficult things? And for that, we have step 3 and the bonus one. So for more difficult things, I create specialized systems to manage that memory. And usually, everything that might need it will ask that system for it. The system might allocate it if it wasn't allocated before, or maybe just allocate all of it at the start. But no one else can hold the resources of the system. It needs to ask for them every time. 
and the clearing resources part will happen at an appropriate moment, preferably in bulk. For example, for a game, you will need to load some resources like textures, and some of them will be needed for the entire game. So we can load them once in the beginning like so, and never free them. Everyone can make use of that resource. So why use shared pointers and complicated things, instead of just loading everything once and never deleting it? But of course, this only works for some specific things, like again, textures. For other things like, let's say that you need to load different levels for your game, you can create a small system that holds the current level, like you can see here. Every time you call a load to another level, the system will make sure to first unload the last loaded map, if it exists. If you make sure that everything that has to do with the map, like entities and such are kept inside the map system, so are all unloaded together with the map data, and you have permanent things like textures in a separate system, you can possibly have memory leaks. So instead of holding counting references to entities and weird stuff, I just clear all of them when I need to. For game dev, this is actually 99% of cases, and for more rare cases, you might consider an even more complicated system, or shared pointers. But there are also other ways, like a temporary allocator or memory arena. For example, you can have a temporary allocator that is just a big circular buffer. On every end of the frame, just clear all of the memory. Inside it, you can do temporary allocations, and they will be all freed at the end of the frame. It's like a garbage collector, but without the negative aspects of it. I will add an important tip here, and that is to not hold pointer references to resources. For example, entities shouldn't hold a reference to their texture, or to parts of the world. Pointers could get invalidated, so why not always pass the texture needed in the draw method of the entity? This will make the code way more robust, and trust me, it won't be slower. In my Minecraft clone, chunks are allocated on the heap, and they also allocate GPU memory. I have a simple rule. Whenever I delete a chunk, I also delete the GPU memory associated with it. And all the loading and unloading then happens in a small portion of the code that I made sure doesn't have problems. Finally, the bonus tip is that some memory doesn't need to be deallocated. If you have resources that need to exist for the entire lifetime of your program, you shouldn't deallocate them at the end. The operating system will always clear the resources for you when you close your program, and if you clear them yourself, that will just make the program close slower, and that complexity to it for no reason. And yes, it is important that your game closes fast, because if it takes longer, the user can get annoyed and force close it, possibly not allowing it to properly save some data, corrupting their save file, and that can be good. So if you found this video useful, click the subscribe button and check out another video like this. See you!